Hey, welcome back. And if you're new here, my name is Christina Kent and I'm a fine artist based out of San Francisco. But today I'm not talking to you from San Francisco. I am actually speaking from my studio here in Newfoundland. I was invited as an artist in residence um, to come to Newfoundland and make a bunch of art here, um, which has been super exciting. Like it, the weather has been beautiful. I thought it was gonna be like foggy and rainy, but it's actually been really sunny and warm. Um, and the space is really nice. Like I have so much space to create. Um, so that has been just totally lovely. And it's really cool because this program, they invite several artists at a time. So I'm kind of here for a whole month with a cohort of other artists. And, and it's just been a blast like to meet everyone, to get to create here and to get this inspiration from the new environment. And I'm gonna make a video where I talk about the residency itself, but right now I wanna talk about something else that came up that I wasn't really expecting, and that is imposter syndrome. And I've made a video on imposter syndrome in the past, um, that was maybe about a year ago, and over that time I felt like I was dealing with it pretty well. Um, I didn't have super strong imposter syndromes feelings coming up. And so I felt like I was, you know, kind of managing it. But for whatever reason, coming to this residency has brought all of those feelings back to the surface. And if you're not familiar with imposter syndrome, it's this idea that you don't deserve to be in the position that you're in, or that you're somehow faking it. And that if everyone realized how bad you actually were, then they wouldn't give you whatever opportunity or status that you have. And so in the context of the residency, this is my first time doing anything like this. Um, and it feels really prestigious. And when I got invited to the residency, you know, I was super excited. But then now that I'm actually here, I started having these feelings like, wait, do I actually deserve to be here? And so when I noticed that this imposter syndrome feeling was creeping up again, I decided to investigate and figure out what was driving these feelings. Why was I, why was I feeling like an imposter? I think part of it is because I've never done a residency like this before. So there's this novelty aspect to it. And I think if we're doing anything new, anything that we haven't done before, then we're going to feel like an imposter because we haven't done it. But I also think another thing that was really driving these feelings was my comparison to the other artists in the program. And this is kind of similar, actually, now that I think about it, to the last time I experienced imposter syndrome, it was when I was invited to a show and I looked at all the other artists in the show and I felt like they were so much better than I was. So I felt like I really didn't belong. And this is kind of a similar situation. So my cohort in this residency, I feel like they are super accomplished artists. They have long CVs with impressive exhibition histories. Um, and a lot of them have MFAs and to me it feels like I mean, and, and they do just have a lot more experience in the art world than I do. Many of them have numerous solo exhibitions. They've participated in art fairs. They have media articles written about them. Um, a lot of these sort of signifiers of success in fine art. And it doesn't help that I'm the youngest artist here, which also makes me feel a little bit out of place. And so when I compare myself to the other artists in the cohort, I feel like an imposter, even though it's not like I snuck in here. Like I was invited to this residency just like everyone else. And the thing with these imposter syndrome feelings is that they can really hold us back. Like when I feel like an imposter, when I feel like I don't deserve to be here, I don't feel in the mindset of, oh, I wanna be creating and painting and, and really, um, really, you know, expressing myself and, and expressing the limits of my creativity or, or pushing myself in my creativity. No, like when I feel like an imposter, I just kind of wanna curl up into a little shell and go and hide and not show myself, which is like the exact opposite of what I wanna be doing on this residency. And so even if it was true that I was an imposter and didn't deserve to be here, that they'd made some administrative mistake, having these feelings just isn't helpful. So how am I dealing with these feelings of imposter syndrome? There are three steps that I'm following to try to combat these feelings of imposter syndrome, move past them so I can really embrace the experience of being at this residency and making the work that I came here to make. The first is reflection. So if you've seen some of my other videos, you might know that I write morning pages every day. This is from the artist way. It's this idea that every morning you get up and you just journal three pages, kind of stream of consciousness writing. And I really like doing these morning pages because usually in the morning I'll start writing and then I'll notice these thoughts about imposter syndrome as they come out on the page. So it's kind of like taking inventory of what are the negative thoughts that are going through my head and how are they expressing themselves? Am I comparing myself to other artists? Am I comparing like my CV to their CV? Am I comparing my work to their work? Like how are these thoughts coming up? 
Because I think if we're not aware of the negative thoughts that we're having, like sometimes I'll just be feeling in a, like I'll feel in a funk, but I don't really know why. And really I've had this like background of negative thoughts going on through my head that until I actually sit and reflect on what those thoughts were, I didn't even actually know that that's kind of what my brain was saying. So sometimes I, I feel the emotion first and then I realize that the, it's the negative self-talk only after doing this reflection. So journaling really helps me notice when these thoughts of imposter syndrome are coming into my mind because it's also not all the time. Like some mornings I wake up and I, and I don't really feel these thoughts and so I can move on with my day more easily versus other mornings I wake up and they're really strong in my mind. So then I realize like, okay, I need to do some work here. So that's the first thing I do. I use journaling to reflect on these thoughts of imposter syndrome. The second thing I do is to practice gratitude. I try to think about how grateful I am to be here, regardless of whether or not I deserve it. I just think about, I have this experience, I've been given this amazing opportunity, and I connect with that strong feeling of gratitude that I have for that. And the reason why I think gratitude can be so powerful is because it makes me immediately feel more joyful in the moment. I think about how happy I am to be here, how beautiful the studio is, how beautiful the weather is, how great an environment it is for creating. And when I think about that, I just feel, I feel immediately joyful and it kind of helps brush the negative thoughts away. I also feel like focusing on gratitude helps me connect more with the present moment, so how I'm feeling right now, versus when I'm having all the imposter syndrome thoughts, I'm, I'm kind of just stuck in my head. I'm not really, I'm not here, I'm not in the moment. So I feel like by practicing gratitude, by writing down things I'm grateful for, or even just thinking about it and trying to feel this like warm glow of gratitude in my body, that brings me to this present moment where I feel like I can move forward. And then the third major step that's helping me out is by taking action, because I feel like I kind of can get held back by these imposter syndrome thoughts when I'm not painting. So if I'm kind of thinking about painting, if I'm in the planning stages, then I can get stuck in imposter syndrome and it just feels like this incredible inertia that's preventing me from getting started. But if I can just take that first step and say, okay, well, I'm gonna just start the painting, then usually I get absorbed in creative flow and all of the all of those negative thoughts and feelings just go away. And sometimes I even have been telling my own inner critic, if it says, no, you're an imposter, you don't deserve to be here, your art's not good enough, then sometimes what I've actually been saying to myself to help move myself forward to, to get into action and take that first step is I say, okay, well, if you think my art's not good enough, let's find out. Let's start the painting, see how that goes, and then we can find out whether or not the inner critic is right. And of course, then once I start painting, I get wrapped up in the creative process and I immediately feel better. So these are the three things I've been trying to do to work with these feelings of imposter syndrome, reflecting on them, practicing gratitude, and then taking action. And I just hope that by sharing my story, um, this can also help give you some helpful ideas if you're dealing with imposter syndrome, either in your creative practice or in your life in general. Anyway, that's all I have for today. If you like this video or if you found it helpful, please let me know in the comments below. And be sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel, or if you know someone who you think would find this video useful, please share it with them. All of these things really help me out. As always, a huge shout out to my supporters on Patreon. Thank you guys so much for supporting this channel and making these videos happen. If you like my art, if you like my videos, and you want to help me make more, check out my Patreon at the link. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.